Vinegas, thank you so very much. And with us now to continue our conversation is California Senator Alex Padilla, who sits on the Judiciary and Homeland Security Committee. He's also the first Latino to be a senator from the state of California. Uh, Senator, it's always uh, a pleasure to see you. As Guad Venegas was pointing out, the Latino vote in some areas shifted toward Republicans in 2020, even though Democrats are still holding an advantage in the Latino voting as a nation. Why do you think this shift is occurring, and is it a significant one? Uh, well, good morning, Jose, uh, and happy Hispanic Heritage Month, by the way. So timely uh, conversation here. Look, I think there's a few things that are going on. Number one, uh, anybody who's uh, traveled to different parts of the country or has even seen you know, a series of uh, Latino-themed uh, movies uh, can understand that uh, the Latino community is diverse, right? When you talk about uh, maybe a third generation, fourth generation Tejanos in South Texas, very different than the dynamics of uh, the Latino community in South South Florida, very different than the dynamics of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans in New York or, you know, very diverse Latino community in California. So the old adage of all politics is local applies to the Latino community as well. Like I think one thing that we have seen uh, shift in recent years is uh, a more aggressive investments by the Republican Party to engage Latino voters, not just the last few weeks before an election. And Democrats are doing the same. And so uh, the Latino vote, like any other voter, should never be taken for granted. And the great news is Democrats have a beautiful story to tell. As you know, I've been in the Senate for uh, uh, about 20 uh, plus months now. And if you look at the American Rescue Plan that was passed with not a single Republican vote, we know which communities were hit hardest by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Inflation Reduction Act, historic investments in climate change, and we know which communities are on the front line when it comes to uh, change, uh, changing uh, climate and, and the devastation that has come with that. Uh, the student relief, uh, the student loan relief that uh, President Biden just initiated, tremendous aid for Latino uh, voters, Latino community in general. So Democrats have a tremendous story to tell. We're out there telling it, and I think it's going to bode well for us this November. And Senator, I want to take you back to the, the humanitarian crisis that we're seeing in, 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 in our border. The government said this week that roughly 8,000 migrants are crossing the border into the U.S. every day. Here, here's some of what uh, the vice president uh, had to tell Vice News when she was asked about the governors of Texas, Florida, and Arizona sending migrants to other parts of the country unannounced. I think it is the height of irresponsibility, much less, frankly, a dereliction of duty when you are an elected leader to play those kinds of games with human life and human beings. If you want, if you think there is a problem, be part of the solution. So, Senator, w what is the solution here? Well, uh, let me just add to what the vice president said. It's also, I think, shameless uh, what's happening. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the latest uh, estimates, but $12,300 per migrant that uh, Governor DeSantis paid to fly folks, fly asylum seekers. Let's understand who we're talking about here uh, out of Texas, all the way to Martha's Vineyard, money that could have and should have been invested and maybe uh, uh, temporary housing, emergency food and shelter. That's something that the federal government uh, needs to invest more in. How about legal representation and a phone call home to connect with loved ones? That's uh, more of a humane treatment of asylum seekers than what uh, these cruel Republican governors uh, are demonstrating. You know, the fix, you know, we have to restore the capacity of the very departments and agencies that were starved under the Trump administration that are in charge of this. We have to long-term fix the legal migration pathways uh, that haven't been modernized in more than 30 years. It's real simple. It's like, you know, water flows where there's least resistance. Uh, if you fix the legal migration opportunities for people seeking to come to this country to work, to study, uh, or anything else, that takes pressure off the irregular migration flows uh, that we have seen in recent years. Senator, it is always a pleasure to see you. I thank you very much for being with us this morning. All right, thank you. Also, have a great day. Likewise, coming up. If